All right, guys, Jack here, JBF Music and Guitar Lessons. What I've got for you today is the analysis to Bandmade Secret My Lips and also probably a bit of Secret Macule Lips as well. We'll see how it goes. Before we hop into a huge shout out and a massive thank you, as always, to Rabbi Rabs, Matt Hortzman, Glenn Kelly, Stephen Williams, Rebecca Hay, and Dale Schools for their continued support on Patreon. You yourself have the means and inclination to support the channel, make sure to help patreon.com forward slash JBF Music. If you don't want to do that, or you can't, just leave a like and a comment it goes a really long way. If you want to chuck a one off tip in the virtual hat, as it were, PayPal is the best way to do that. But too much for me, let's crack into it. The first thing I want to talk about here, um, I don't know if this is something I've discussed properly before uh, when I was listening to this the first time through, I'll put the reaction links with the, the eyes up in the corner um, I was able to determine it was not in standard tuning. Now the more kind of explain the process for working that out, the more you know a band and the more, know, the more you know what tunings they tend to use it becomes a bit easier to work out what they might be in. Uh, someone like Devin Townsend is in some weird C tuning and so is the guy from a freak kitchen, I think. You get some people that do um what's his name? Tom Quill tunes the the B and the E string up a semitone, I think, so everything's tuned in, in fourths. But I can hear from the riff do 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 if I was to play that I'd probably be on the low E. And this is just from playing guitar for too many years and stuff like um, 20th Century Boy. <laughs> I just kind of know that that sound do do it's a minor third it's low so i think it's probably going to be on the low e. but when i tried to play that along it sounds it sounds a bit wrong uh, so depending on how well i've mixed things here you might not be able to hear that so i can hear it's a bit wrong i can hear is wrong as well. So what I'll tend to do is take this thing that I know is right but in the wrong key, move it up one octave. So I'm finding the next D which is here, using the same space, so minor third, an octave higher. And what I'll do is I'll just move it down until it sounds right. So I'm going to move this shape down a semitone. So I'm going from the 7 to the 10. I'm going to try going from the 6 to the 9. Let's try that. Okay. Right. So, what that says to me... It's an ass getting itchy nose as well. That it's probably... Oh, weird sidetrack there. So what that's suggesting to me is that... Because instead of going from an E to a G, it sounds like it's going from an E flat to an F sharp. The lowest note I have is an E, right? If I want to make that an E flat, I can just move the string down a semitone. Um, if that string's down a semitone, the rest of them are probably going to be down a semitone as well. So I would watch a bit more of the song and make sure that kind of adds up. So when she goes to this higher note, do, 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 do. So right, I've tried to pause it in a place where it's easy enough to see. You can just count the frets, right? You can count first fret, second fret, third fret with the inlay, nothing on the fourth. It looks like she's on the fifth fret. That's not right. That one is. And again, that's just a semitone lower. So I know there's at least two strings that are tuned down half a step. So what I would then do is tune everything down half a step and hope that's in the right ballpark. And I've gone ahead and done this already, so I know that it is correct. To the best of my knowledge, they haven't uh, done anything weird beyond that. But just if you're wondering how to work out if something's in a strange tuning, like when you've gone as low as you can, how do you, how do you know it drops from there? The trick is just to take it up the octave and then you can hear, and just move it down. So say if this didn't sound right here, how would it just moved it down? To the D, go between the D and the F. The five and the, the eight frets on that um, A string there. And there are songs that they do in like drop D or drop C sharp, and that's how I would kind of work that out. I would find the same idea an octave higher, then work out what I'd need to do to the standard tuning to be able to play that. 
So, having said all that, if you just want the, the TLDR, we've got an E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. If you want to think about the sharps, you'd have a D sharp. I have to tune around to make sure I'm not telling nonsense here. We have an A sharp, an F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and then a D sharp. I need to retune this because it's not quite behaving itself. Well, that's close enough, I think. Good enough for jazz. So, that all being said, let's look at the riff. Okay, so I'll slow it down to make it a bit easier to hear. So in terms of the notes, we have the open, what used to be the E string, it's now a D flat, I'm just going to call it E string because my, my brain can't handle that. So the way, there's two ways you can play this kind of chuggy thing. You could go down, down, up, down. Or you could go down, up, down, up. Or... So they sound the same, it's just whatever is more comfortable. I'll do it slowly, so try the down, down, up, down and try the alternate picking, so just down, up, down, up. And whichever feels better, a lot of the time we prefer to go uh, the double down thing, so down, down, up, down. Um, recently I've been experimenting more with just going uh, alternate picking. It's six and a half a dozen for myself, but if you find one better than the other, just go for that. So you have that. Then we've got this little quarter tone bend on the third fret on the C string. I think it's just a pull off. And then that same thing again. That same thing one more time, hit the third fret, bend it a little bit sharp and pull off. Then I think there's a kind of a muted hit. So I'm just kind of hitting maybe the low E, maybe the low A. Palm muting it to be on the safe side, but this hand is muting out the strings. And then you want to hit the fifth fret on the D and give it a nice bit of vibrato. So you have. When you get up to speed, it's got that cool punk, almost sort of thrash metal. Feel to it. Final thing I would say is a lot of the time, we, we, we like uh, when something's fast, we try to tense up because it feels like you're giving it more force. If you try to tense up on the bit, it'll probably just slow things down. So try to play as lightly as possible while still kind of getting that sound. Um, I'll pop useful videos in whichever the corner of the eyes in with this kind of idea of playing as lightly as possible, but it's as hard as necessary to still get a kind of sound. A thing that jumped out at me when I was first listening to this is the kind of gnarly guitar tone. Now, I've been told recently that gnarly is still a word that's used in LA that can mean, uh, it can mean good, bad, it can mean disgusting, or it can mean kind of interesting, depending on the context. As a Scotsman who's fond of the word I, um, I, 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 I like this one word that can mean many, many different things. Hi. 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 See, it's just, it's all about the inflection. So if any of our uh, early residents can confirm or deny this, that would be great. But I think that's the best way to just kind of, this kind of slightly dirty, kind of like, there's a snarl to it, kind of gnarly. A real, real kind of spank to it. Which I don't have at all, so what I thought I would do is show how that might be happening. So I've got on here a fairly kind of driven patch, um, a compressor to make everything easier, a drive to add a bit of key in the amp. I've got a drive in the effects loop here, which I might take out because I think that's colouring it. Uh, is this being used as a boost? Okay, that's a bit too loud, but it's in the right sort of ballpark. That's not bad either, I'll just leave that in for now. What I think I'll do, I'm not going to use the wah pedal, so I'm just going to change this to an EQ pedal. Um, just use a graphic EQ because that's a bit more simple. 
what it sounds like to me is... Can I get anything around 700 or 800? Okay, I'll try, I'll try a few different graphic EQs and see which one sounds most like it. I, I, I would To me it sounds like there's a, a kind of honkiness around maybe 700. I don't have that in this one here, so I'm just going to move up 500. And if I play this, I'll take it out. Particularly if I let the G string ring. doing is adding lots of this 500 uh, frequency in. So you can hear it's got that kind of honk to it. I'm going to put in a bit of 1k and a bit of 2 as well because I think it's higher than that. I'm going to cut it here a little bit. It's just what my ears are saying. Okay, so that's close. Now if we take it off... So you can hear it's really adding in a lot of this kind of high end. I'm actually going to put a bit of 8k and 16 as well. So these are just kind of making it a bit more, yeah. Making it a bit more shimmery. I will balance the volume because I will have made it louder here. Uh, because I've made everything, if you put a frequency up, you make things louder. So you want to try and balance out the volume to make sure it sounds how you want it to sound. Because generally if something's louder, we think it's is better, even if it's not. It's a bit too wash. Okay, so this isn't too, it's not too bad. Um, I think I can probably do a bit better. Maybe if I took the 500 down and put the 1k up. Oh, what about the 2k? Okay, that's a bit better. What about if I take that down? It's okay, but still not got that, that kind of chewiness to it. So what I'm going to try doing is using a different graphics EQ pedal. Um, there's one that looked like it had, okay, so this one's got 640, which is around 700. So I'll just put this all to zero if I can. Okay, I can just double click it, excellent. Come on. Uh, and I'll boost this 640. And you can hear again, feel that kind of sound. Okay, I quite like that. I think this one's probably going to work well, so I'm just going to boost it all the way. Oh, is this going to make it too... Yeah, I'm going to cut a little bit of that out. Boost that, and then 500. Do I want some of that? Maybe. What about the 10 key for... Okay, so you won't hear much of this. Just add, you could call it presence, as a tiny bit more presence. For, for my my, my um, hearing in that range isn't as good as it used to be um, from listening to too much loud music without my ear protection uh, in, my, in my youth. So it just to me that just adds on a bit of brilliance. That's closer, I think. Still a great spank that I don't quite have. So, there are different ways you can get this type of sound. The first way I've looked at here is taking a graphic equaliser, which is just, it's a fancy treble mid bass, you know, on your kind of mixer controls. It's a fancy way of doing that. The ones at the low where it says 80, that's the most bassy one. 10k is the highest. We can try that in different places in the signal chain. So we could try putting it in the effects loop. I don't know what this will sound like, but let's find out. <laughs> So that's changed the sound quite a bit, hasn't it? I suspect it's because... It sounds fuller there. Here it's kind of making it sound a bit too thin. It's I think it's because it's not hitting the amplifier. It's after the amplifier. Let's put it after the cabinet. This probably won't sound great either, but we'll try it. sound quite tinny like it's maybe in a small kind of radio speaker or something like that which might be good in uh overall mix but i don't like it by itself so i'm going to put it back where it was here try it after the drive and see how that sounds all right four that's just got a bit more beef to it that i like so 
Another way of getting the sound, I will turn that off and we'll look at the drive pedal. And what I'm going to do is just move the tone right up all the way so we'll get more of a kind of sound. I'm also going to make sure there's more high end in there. A wee bit too much. Let's bring that down a bit. What other drive did I have? Okay, that's just a fat drive. So, so that's sounding a bit more like it than it was to my ears anyway. So what I've done there is boosted the tone on the drive pedal. Tone basically means more treble, less treble. So when it's all this way, lots of treble. It's all this way, very little treble. Okay. So we got that. Tiny bit too much. I'm going to put it on 9.5. Let's go for a 9 even. Yeah. And what we can do is we can put the two things on in conjunction. So I had the graphic EQ that made it sound a bit more like it, and the drive pedal changing that made it sound a bit more like it. We put them on together. Is that making it sound less like it? That's getting closer. Okay, so I think she's got slightly less gain than I've got, so I'm going to dial that back a tiny bit. Best way to do that. Put the gain down here, I suppose. Cool. And what if I push that a bit more? Gain back a bit. Too much gain now, isn't it? Cool. I'm also on the amp settings, I'm just going to give it more presence, I'm going to give it more treble everywhere. Yeah. So I'm basically just up in the treble, I put a bit more mid in and the presence, and it's kind of giving me that sound that I want. I think I get with a bit more gain. That's, the game's kind of... ...fattening it out a bit, which I don't really want. I'll take a bit, I'll, I'll put the bass away as well. And what have I done in this EQ? So there's an EQ on the amp, I'm just going to boost 2k a bit. Cool, right, not quite as much as that. And a bit more brilliance on the 8k as well. I'm going to bring this 500 in a little bit more. It's giving it too much body. Out it goes. Too heavy like that. So it's the old Wallace and Gromit again, isn't it? Nick Park moving it just a little bit. Yeah, I want to boost this a little bit so we get a bit more. Cool, I think that's about as close as I'm going to get today. Yeah. The only thing you can do is just play a bit closer to the bridge. If I play more here, it sounds different to if you play here. Or in the middle. She's still got a bit more, a tiny bit more honk on it, isn't there? How can I get that? Is the mid going to do it? Okay, mid's making it too soft, so mid out. All the presence, a bit more bright, a bit more treble. It's almost there, but not quite. That's quite good. It's too much gain. It's too much gain still. Even 
game, last game still. It's not better. Okay. Uh, I think that's I think that's better now. So what I've done is I have just moved the level down a little bit on the drive pedal. Now if the level's higher, it drives the amp more because you're sending more of a signal into the amp. So just for no reason making it louder, making it more kind of saturated. So I can have that down at four. So yeah. So that part, if you want to learn it, we've got an E5, open E, string, second fret on the A. Same shape up here, so we've got two on the E, four on the A. Move that up a semitone, so we've got three and five. Up a tone, so we've got five and seven. So uh, if I can try and condense down what I was talking about there for this kind of like squawkier tone, a bit less gain than you might think you need to help the kind of honkiness pop through. If you use a drive pedal, try moving the treble up and the bass down a little bit. Don't use too much drive on it and use the level to push the amplifier a little bit. If you have a graphic EQ pedal, stick that, I'd say, in front of the drive pedal and experiment with what frequencies you think give you that kind of gnarly, kind of snarly sound. So for me, if I had somewhere around, if I had 700, I'd have boosted that. And I think, yeah, two 2500s probably about right as well. Again, it sounds a wee bit like when I'd moved the uh, graphic EQ to the end of the chain, it sounds a wee bit like it's through a kind of small little radio speaker. But it, it works really well in the context of the song. And what I particularly like is that the EQ on the vocals, the kind of slightly... What would you call it? When they come in, kind of matches that. So you can hear there, there's not that much gain on the guitar, but there's a lot of treble in it, a lot kind of rattle to it, a lot of hiss. Yeah, so it's quite... They complement each other, the, the vocals don't have much bass on them, but they don't have a huge amount of treble either, it's kind of like a nice kind of mid-rangey filter to my ears anyway. Cool, and then when you take a more kind of standard guitar tone like uh, Miku's got here and you listen to them together, or if you put you know one headphone in, one out, or turn off your speaker or whatever, it really it works really nicely because this is a more kind of conventional gain tone, this one's got a lot of character in it, and if it was too with the kind of lot of character and lots of gnarliness, it'd probably be too much. If it wasn't there at all, it wouldn't have that kind of kind of hiss to it, that kind of growl. So that's a really good way to balance it out, is have one that's a little bit over the top with one that's just kind of a standard sound. Merge them together and you get this really great... makes a kind of spanky sounds and uh, more standard ones. Another way you could get that sound is if you've got a wah pedal, just keep rocking it forward until you get this kind of pleasing honk sound um, that sounds right for the frequencies you're playing in. So because this is in E flat, this song for the most part anyway, um, you'd want to play that riff and move the pedal until you got that kind of squawky sound. You can also try like using different pickup combinations, so using uh, those ones. Which is probably more accurate, though that's the first thing, this is okay, lesson here that I'm always learning myself, use the most simple thing first. So, <laughs> rather than being on this pickup, I can switch to that one, I get this kind of... and a slightly funky honky sound. Um, and that probably would have been much quicker than <laughs> changing all the all the settings I had there. So yep, uh, and then once you've realised that you can do the most simple thing, you can mess about with the complicated stuff as well. So for example, we could have this. We make it even more spankly. It just sounds, it sounds so nasty, isn't it? It's brilliant. So I'm uh, about 
25 to 30 seconds into the song and who knows how long I've gone on for this may be a new record and this um, idea of just taking uh, a small part of the frequency and kind of uh, frequency spectrum and kind of leaning into it and accentuating it means when everything kicks in more when they're not just playing this um, unison riff the dun -dun 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 -dun, unison a fancy way of saying everyone's playing it together it's going to sound much more impactful when things kick in so even the dun 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 is filling out the space a little bit There, you can hear the filter on the voice. So, there's not necessarily a volume boost there in her voice, it's more an EQ shift. So, if you remember when I had the graphic EQ and I was making it quieter, but still sort of sounded louder when it was on, our perceived, uh, the way we perceive volume is different from real volume. So it could be a little bit louder, but because it's more full-bodied, there's more bass in it and a bit more of the high end, uh, even if it was the same volume, to us it would still kind of sound louder a lot of the time. So before I power into breaking that bit down, there was a few, this will probably be months ago now because of how I like to film things in blocks, but someone had said if you're not sure about things, it's sometimes if you checked out the fan cams, it might clean, clear things up for you. So I thought, I wonder if she's actually using that fingering or not. I'll check the fan cam. Sadly, this is what happened. Right? I thought, oh, hang on, it's a slightly awkward wrist angle, so maybe it, maybe it is this big stretch after all, because that's when you kind of bend your wrist. Kind of licking, kind of speculating. It could be, but she's letting the strings ring into each other a bit more live than she was in the live music video. And then here, it turns round. And you can see the fingers are like this. It's not like this. So I was like, well, what, what on earth's happening there? So I think the way she's doing it is rather than playing this note here, which makes it easier to mute consistently. Moved it over to the B string and it's string hopping a bit. And if we continue watching that. Yeah, so to there. Instead of what I'd done was that. And then here I, I heard. But if we watch how she's playing it here. This hand's kind of here and it's not moving, so. Are the same notes. But sometimes you play things in the studio different to how you play them live, sometimes intentionally, sometimes they just morph over time. But this looks like this is definitely how she played it quite recently, so I will break that down just now. So just to reiterate, we are half a step down here. What I've got is the third fret on what used to be the A string, let's call it the A string. Um, you can bar this, so you can also play the third fret on the B string and you could then bring in your little finger for the fifth fret on the D string and you're just going through it uh, A, D string, B string, back to the D If you don't like barring you could use your uh, second finger here on that third fret and what you want to experiment with here is really how much pan muting so I was using quite a lot there, just resting my hand pretty much on the bridge a little bit closer actually. That's too much. And if you want to ring into it more, you use a bit less palm muting. That's just like letting my hand rest against the strings or lifting up ever so slightly. If you anchor it against these low ones, and don't really palm mute that B string, you'll probably get more of an authentic sound. The next part, what we're doing, is basically taking this third finger and putting it on the fifth fret on the A string, and you just keep picking the same way. So you've got that. Up to the fifth fret. Then we've got the open E. Open G and an open D. 
I suspect what she's doing here is holding the second fret on the A string, because if you hit that by mistake, it's going to sound better than if it's the open A. It's a minimal difference, but you get more of a clash with that than you would with this. And again, experiment if you want to really palm mute. All open. Somewhere in between. Help I've had the right strings. So like that is a way a way I particularly find intuitive or comfortable playing, which is why I went for the so if you want to learn my weird way that I find easier, I've got three, five, and then seven, and we're just going between the strings. Easing up on the palm you get a tiny bit between the D and the G strings. Then you move this note up to here, so we've got five, five, seven. Then slopped it there, but <laughs> I got two open E's and then fifth fret on the D, fill up to the open. Stopped it again. The reason I like this is because it really lets that kind of honkiness come through, whereas I think the open strings for the way I've got my tone set up, it just kind of gets a bit muddy, but... <laughs> That retains the charm. That really, really kind of lets that shine through. Because of the... <laughs> Smash my mic stand because of this. Because of this honkiness, I can't totally make out what's going on. I'm here. I, I, I think I'm hearing it wrong, but I'm hearing. I know it's wrong, so I don't want to break it down properly. But there's trend picking going on on G string, and it sounds like up to the seventh. I'm hearing an eleven in there and a seven somehow as well. And this is, I mean, you could see it as a, a bad thing about this tone, that it's harder to identify some of the notes, but it's just a really cool aesthetic choice to me. It's creating a very cool timbre over the top, and that uh, pains me to say it, but as a musician, the notes don't matter that much, because it's an overall contour, is what we're listening to. What I'll do is I'll check out the um, studio version and see if it's a bit clearer on that. Okay, listening very closely here, the... Oh, let's find out how you pronounce it. Shamisen. So using the... Shamisen. I would say Shamisen. Shamisen. Shamisen, okay. In the studio track, I think I can hear a bit more of the pitch. So I'm hearing these notes in amongst the flurry of trend picking. I still think before that I'm, I'm hearing the... I, that doesn't sound right, what's going on? Okay, so we've got this, but it's trend picking, so you're basically playing this once. Probably four on the open G string, the 14th fret on the G now, then back to that four. So 16 on the G, three open Gs, 14 on the G, three open Gs. And then up at the kind of trend picking speed where you just kind of walk into it and hope for the best. I cannot be 100% certain, but I'm fairly sure the strap keeps popping off today. I need to get some strap blocks. Uh, th that's about as certain as I can be that that's what's happening. Listen to it yourself and let me know what you think.
And I think I can kind of hear that. Da, 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 da. I think I can hear it in there, but I might just be imagining it. Back down to the big gnarly riff. What's really worthwhile listening here is the kick drum. Dum, dum, dum. The kind of the, the drums in general. So it's really emphasising that um, that chug. That dum, dum, dum. Um, again, this kind of unison thing, which they don't do often, of simple, tight riff, just smacking in the face. And like, okay. That was very cool, so I didn't notice that the, the, listening to it before, the drums here. Uh, when it comes out this little fill, this the build-up thing, we have... So it's just following the rhythm verbatim. A great little pause, and then when the drums kick in, get like a little energy burst. It's a bit like in um, Blue Easter Cults Don't Fear the Reaper, how the drums drop out. Because I always think it's really it's great in a pop song when the drums kind of come in, particularly with that cowbell. Um, like Everybody Hurts or something like that, where the song kind of builds up. But don't feel the reaper, there's no drums, then they come in. And then after the first chorus, they drop out and then come back in again. And you get that extra little uh, pop, which you otherwise don't get that kind of boost in the song if they don't drop out. If they drop out for too long, it can, it can kind of lose the momentum. So really great way of doing it. Very cool bass fills there, the typical bandmate thing of it's a second verse, so we're going to tweak it a little bit. Still keeping true to the kind of simplistic riff, but adding in the little fills to fill out the space. That's why they're called fills, isn't it? Because it fills out the space. I don't think my brain's ever clocked that before. There we go. It's like cling film. It took me years before I realised, oh, it's a film that clings, because I've always just thought of it as cling film, all one word. But it's brilliantly named. It's a film that clings, cling film. Apparently it's the same for butterflies. Uh, let, let, let me know if I've been led astray because I was told this one that uh, when people used to churn butter, butter uh, butterflies would appear um, and try to sort of eat it because they'd be drawn towards it. I've just accepted it as truth and I've been telling people, but it could very well be wrong. But it makes sense, but like you'd have like a, a kind of fruit fly or something like that. So let me know if butterflies are indeed butterflies. And if you don't know, then just keep telling people and we'll spread it because it sounds good. <laughs> so there's the fill in the space, you've got a B up to a C. So that'd be second fret on the A up to the third. So it's that same riff before. Uh, Oh yeah, but not as much as that. I am. Yeah. So the same. But instead of three of those pull-offs, you got two. And kind of palm muting quite heavily on that B to C. This is. The drums are really kind of uh, slurring the uh, the kick drum here, that rhythm. Or maybe they're doing a slightly different one. No, I think she's just dragging it. And if you're wondering why it sounds particularly heavy, that's kind of why. If the you kind of pull back on the um, it's got playing behind the beat. So you're still in time, but slightly behind. And particularly if the bass locks in with that, um, it's just a huge sound. If the guitarist is tight enough to lock in with it as well, which most of the time we aren't, we tend to try and play ahead of the beat as guitarists. And um, we just get this huge, full, really kind of heavy, ominous sound. So, so here, the variation of the chorus, I think. Where is it? Let's check. 211. So I'd, I'd wondered when I was listening through if the studio one would have um, just kind of cropped this this bit here, this wah-ah bit. Because it would sound quite cool if you...
copied and pasted that after itself so it would sound a bit more robotic they've gone for a more um a more organic approach here which works particularly well but i think with the editing in the music video it made my brain kind of think oh i wonder if the kind of sharp edits line up with the, the music doing this kind of robotic kind of uh, sh sharp edits in the music oh i don't think it's even edits i think it's just strobe lights and my brain made a connection that wasn't there Oh, there is. There's kind of a bit of editing with strobing, so I can see why I see why I had thought that. I'm going to see if she's doing something different on the drums. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So compared to the first verse, there's a lot more going on with the kick drum here, which works nicely because this bit before there's the kind of staggered kick drum thing as well. So yeah, it's like... It's, it makes it much heavier. That kind of double bass action. If you don't know what, what, what double bass is, it's there's obviously an instrument called a double bass that people hold up, right? But it's kind of shorthand for a double bass pedal, so... You've got your right foot, usually for um, right-handed players, you use that to operate the kick drum pedal, you push it down, it's a wee beater into the, the kick drum or the bass drum. But what you can get is another beater next to it that you use your left foot to to activate. So your right foot does the first beater, your left foot does the second. And this means instead of your right foot just having to hammer at the pedal constantly, so do, 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 you can dun, 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 between the two feet. So if you ever wonder in, in metal in particular how they get those kind of blast beats and those really fast, that's quite often how they sometimes use triggering. So they just need to kind of tap it or be near it, and it might trigger two samples, which is uh, cheating a little bit. But if it's you know you do what you do to get your your song, I suppose. Ooh, just bang. So like a, a tone bend on the fifth fret on the E string. What would be interesting from a purely kind of songwriting point of view is um, whether Kanami had set up this tone and this is what came out of it or the song came first and then the tone kind of shaping happened afterwards because sometimes you find the way things are set up changes the way you play and what you think sounds cool. Like this has got this real kind of... I'd kind of be tempted to do more funky stuff. Well, hang on. Because even something as simple... It's moving to the pickups like I did before. That doesn't sound right to me anymore. I want more work out. Uh, yeah, so I'd want to play a bit more funky, but also lean into this kind of really. Kind of squawkiness of it. I just kind of play simple chords. I wouldn't really want to do complex uh, chords because to me, there's a bit too much of the EQ. So just this kind of simple power chords, even just. Like this, a real cool call it to that. If we go on the, the bridge pickup, ob ob objectively it might sound better, but there's a real snarl to just a ton of character that you don't otherwise get uh, using that. So, sound can affect how you write, because that's the that's something I've never come up with with that sound, but this sound. 
you know, it's just, it speaks to me. There's something kind of hissy and snarly about it that I like. So it would be interesting to know. If you guys do know, uh, hit me up in the comments. Cool. Uh, th like that riff, that's a great example. Instead of... It's got this spanked it. It just sounds cooler to, to, to my ears anyway. So if you want that, you've got five, fifth fret on the E, open E, third fret on the E back up to the fifth. <laughs> Stifling a sneeze there, so apologise for the strange gurning. And uh, yeah, we'll break down some of the soul. So, probably using the blues note there, I think. Up uh, the octave. Yeah, so if you want this one, we've got a double stop up here. The 17th fret on the E string, we're going to be bending the 20th fret up a tone. Same shape, moving it down to the 15th fret on the E and the 18th fret on the B. And oh, check, check out that first bit, right? And if you have the finger strength, re bend it a couple of times for that kind of raunch. So we got the 17th fret on the E, hammer on to 18, pull off to 17, pull off to 15. Then we've got 17 to 15 on the B. Probably picking both of those, maybe pull off. But again, like, you know, if you find it easier to pick more or to pick less, just do what you need to do to get it sounding right. Then I think she moved up something along those lines. Yeah. So what we've done is instead of having this 16th fret here, we're going to go 15 to 17. No, sorry. Instead of having the 18th fret here, we've got the 17 to 19, back to 17, 15, and then back here. So basically all you've done is move this note from here to here. Help if I played it better than that. Uh, so what I've got after that. Right, so we're then bending the, to finish this phrase off, 17th fret up a tone. And adding a bit of vibrato on the B string there. Break it down a wee bit more. Got the then this pattern here. I would uh, just pick the E string once and the B string once and pull off. It's going to be easier to get the speed on. And you want to play that. I believe it's five times. So you have one, two, three, four, five. Then we go up to this one, which I think we just play four times. One, two, three, four. And then wrap it up with that. In terms of our music theory, because I know you guys love this kind of stuff, this note here is a blues note, just kind of making it spicy. So it would be messing about with the blues note there. Call it blues note because it's appropriate from the blues scale. I believe the first time I heard that it was referenced uh, Slash or Dimebag Daryl. Um, link to stuff with them with the eyes up in whichever corner it's in. But that's a kind of uh, like down. that kind of thing that Dimebag used to quite like doing using the blues note to and incorporating in a kind of a metal sound and this idea kind of Kind of creating a sequence out of it makes it a bit more contemporary as well when you compare it to like a more kind of standard blues. 
is the same idea as using this note. But we can... And, you know, we start picking it faster, you put in a sequence which is like, you know... That thing. A sequence, like a, a repeating sequence of notes. I will put it back to normal speed now because we don't need it to slow down. I've got some kind of pentatonic goodness. So I'm not going to break this one down verbatim, um, but if you want something close to it, use your E minor pentatonic. Bad in the blues note. What's quite good to play this one as a kind of slight bonus trick, instead of playing a always like that, you can use a position shift when you get to here, slide down to the 10th fret on the A string, then we can go and kind of use that then um, the 10th fret on the E underneath it. So um, it just means you'll kind of write Low, solos and licks a bit differently if you find yourself getting stuck kind of rot moving even a tiny bit of a scale to a slightly different position is a good thing the reason i came across that is because um this guitar has got quite a wide neck and i don't particularly like when playing standing to have to do that stretch i prefer to do that i mean i will do it if i have to but you know if i'm given a choice i would prefer to switch position there An unexpected jazzy interlude And the uh, bass just adding a little bit of flavour with its notes. Jesus. Oh, See, I'm hearing that, but I can look at her fingers and that's not what's, that's not what's happening. Final wee things to wrap up here, if we go to this final bit here, listen to the drums. Changing it up a little bit to give it a slightly more dancey, uplifting feel. We've got that very high... Yeah, that's a proper soprano note there hitting a... Be an F sharp because I'm down tuned slightly. That's um, right up there in the back and vocal. Is it here again? No, where is it? Come on. Is there a harmony or are they both doing that note? I think the vocal underneath is doing that. Yeah. And the higher one. Far too high for me, about an octave lower. That's about where I can get to here. No. <laughs> Even in the ridiculous falsetto territory, that's getting very, very high. Cool. Slight flourish before the end, and it's really weird to see crowd clapping and there not be noise. So that's going to be my complaint about that song. <laughs> it's the internet, we have to moan about something, don't we? So uh, as always, I fell down a little rabbit hole and got very much sidetracked by the uh, not only the guitar this time, but the timbre on the guitar. Um, hopefully that was at least somewhat interesting and I touched on things that weren't too niche and guitarist orientated. But uh, do, as ever, let me know if there's um, broader topics you'd be more interested in. But it, it just seems to be what, what my ears hear on the day and my brain goes, that thing! And it just, it just seemed to follow that kind of garden path. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much. If you've not subscribed, you might as well give that a click. If you want to support the channel on Patreon, feel free to do that. There's also other videos to check out here. Like and a comment goes a real way, but cheers guys! Hope we're all having a good one. <laughs>